at what age did you introduce your kids to financial literacy concepts, and what methods did you find most effective? Well, I did very differently. First, and, and you know, you can't answer that question very well because all kids are different. And uh, I'll give you an example of that. Uh, my um, oldest son happens to be a hedge fund manager. I mean, a market neutral hedge fund manager. He does very well for his clients and himself, unbelievably, because his fees are very low. Uh, and uh, he was kind of restless and not fine, not getting much interest. This one he was, say, 16, and not getting much interest in the world. So I said, why don't you take a look at the stock market, John, and uh, I'll pick out a couple of stocks for you. You can pick out a couple of stocks that you like and follow them and see what happens. We aren't going to buy them, just put them on paper. So he picked out about four stocks. And I didn't know how successful that advice was until I went into his bedroom one evening and there they were all on little letters on his lampshade. <laughs> so that was a, it was a way to get somebody interested in investing. Uh, and, you know, I, I detest these um, contests um, that schools and colleges have among, among kids to see who can pick the best portfolio and all that. And all that. Because it suggests that that's the way you should invest. But that's just a game. That doesn't have anything to do with real investing. <clears throat> so, uh, at what age is a kid able enough, and again, all, all children are going to be different, able enough to understand uh, the, the essential message that I give? And I should tell you that for 25 years, so let's use that one, probably the oldest, the, the oldest child, um, well, the children probably, they're now in their, well, two, two of them had their 60th birthday. God, am I that old? <laughs> <laughs> so probably when they got into their early 20s, late teens, uh, I told them I was going to put some money away for them every year, and I was going to put it in Vanguard Balanced Index Fund. And that's a, yeah, I did, and part of it's an administrative convenience. You know, I've got six kids, 12 grandchildren, how many great-grandchildren? Um, I guess six great-grandchildren, is that right, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I told you I relied on Mike for a lot. <laughs> and uh, so probably in their late teens or 20s. And I told them what I was going to do was put it in a balanced index fund, told them what that meant. It wouldn't go up as much as the market, but it wouldn't go down. And you didn't have to worry about it. And then every once in a while, a news clipping would come along. And I used one of them in my book, Little Book of Common Sense Investing. It showed how well the balanced fund had done, balanced index fund, which didn't very sensational at all. But it had beaten the, the college endowment funds. I think it's very close to the chart that Gus Sorter showed you a little while ago. And so... I said, to you, just don't do anyone. I, I put it away. They it's in trust. They won't get it for, I guess, I like cork. I can't remember. No, they don't even get it then. <laughs> then their parents become the trustees, and then they can draw capital. If they want to buy a new house or something like that, or put a down payment down on a new house. But you would be amazed at, I won't give you the numbers, but putting a large kind of gift that I can afford to do every year, year after year, for 25 years, oh. my, these damn kids are rich. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I don't give them valuations. I don't talk about it. I want them to make their own way in financial life. And uh, when I cork, they're going to be very, very happy grandchildren. Uh, but um, I won't be there to hear the laughter, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure. 